Hi there. In this tutorial, we'll be linking to some XAVC L media corresponding to four camera angles. We'll then illustrate the challenges of multicam editing with XAVC L material. We'll then transcode the group clip into an offline format to improve real time multicam editing. We'll demonstrate a brief multicam editing session. Then we'll relink to the source media for color matching and finishing. We'll then flatten the edit to perform a video and audio mixdown, and then export as a QuickTime reference file. Finally, we'll use Video Mastering Suite to transcode for YouTube. Let's get started. First, we'll open the source browser, navigate to our four camera angle clips, Select them and drag them into the bin, or click the link button. Now we'll open up each of these clips and set a mark in point at the beginning of each clip. Now we'll select all four clips, right click, and create a group, making sure we have the endpoints as the sync point for this group. Let's rename it to group. Now we'll create a new sequence. We'll call it multi-edit. Load the group into the source browser. We'll disable some of the extraneous channels and drag the group down to the timeline. Now we'll switch into multi-edit mode using the composer menu. You can see the four camera angles show up in the source side and the selected camera angle shows up on the record side. You can see how jittery the video is at this point. If we play it back, you can see how it uh, it's very jerky. You couldn't possibly be cutting this in real time to the uh, beat of the music. So we'll disable the multicam mode again. What we're going to do now is select the group clip and we're going to transcode it. So we'll select transcode. We're going to select a uh, very low bandwidth codec here. This is the H.264 proxy codec. I'll uh, also transform the, uh, or transcode rather, the audio files and send this out to my USB drive. Okay, once this is done, we have four new media clips. You can see those. Okay, we're done. I'm going to take those four clips. And let's create a new bin. And we'll call it offline. Move those four clips into the offline bin just to keep them separate from the original source clips. And I'll make another new bin called Sequences. And let's just drag the sequence and the group clip. So now we've got source media in the source bin, proxy media in the offline bin, and now we have our sequence and group in the sequence bin. Now I'm selecting all of the proxy media and the sequence. I'm right clicking on it and saying relink and I'm going to relink to the selected clips and create a new sequence which is now the relinked sequence so we haven't actually changed our original sequence we've just simply created a new sequence that is linked to the proxy media I'll open that up and you can see that it's proxy media by the yellow highlight on the video 
I'm going to switch into multicam mode and you can see how smoothly this plays back now. We'll give it actually a play here. Just watch the uh, source viewer as well. Dirty nails and weathered hands, broken back from breaking land. So that's that's something we could actually cut to. We'll just trim it up a little bit here. I want to take away some of the dead space at the beginning and we'll start just as he starts clapping his uh, drumsticks together and we can trim the end off a little bit. You can see here as you're clicking the thumbnails in the source viewer that it actually introduces cuts into the video track and it switches at the same time to the camera angle so now we have multiple camera angles actually they were all the same camera angles so we're able to remove them remove the extraneous edits okay we'll start at the beginning with camera angle two cut to different angles, time to the beat of the music. And we'll just do a few of them here for demonstration purposes. Dirty nails and weathered hands. Okay, that should be good enough. Now you can actually change the timing by simply entering into trim mode. So if you're not happy with the way a cut happened, you don't have to undo the whole operation. You can actually just select. You won't be able to trim it if you're linked video to your audio track, because you'll notice that there are no cut points in the audio. It's one continuous track, so you have to first unlink the video and audio. Now you can drag that around or just use the normal trim tools of Media Composer just to adjust the timing. That's a little bit better. If you're not happy with a particular camera angle but you're okay with the timing, you can always just right click on one of the clips in the timeline and select a different camera angle. For example, I can switch from camera 3 to camera 4, camera 1 in this case. Okay, so that's nice and fluid, and I'm quite happy with that. Okay, well, exit multicam mode. And now we'll deselect the proxy media. We're going to relink back to the original source clips. So we'll select the source clips, right click on the multicam sequence that we were just editing. And again, we're going to say, you know, selected clips. We're going to create a new sequence again. So we're not modifying the sequence we just edited will create a brand new sequence and once again it's linked back now to the source media. You can see it's pretty pretty jerky once again but you might you might actually want to switch over at this point and do some finishing here. This might be where you color match uh, between different camera angles, you can tell with this these samples here that they weren't color uh, weren't color balanced between the the white balancing was off between the different cameras. That'll be the topic of a 
of a future tutorial. Okay, so next we're going to flatten this out. So we've basically we're saying we're we've committed to the different camera angles, and so we can take the option to basically flatten it out so that it removes the group component and basically every one of those camera angles will now link back to its instead of to the the group it will link back to the actual source clip I mean, you don't have to do this step but this can actually make the performance a little bit better if you plan to do you know additional finishing here or if you were going to send this out to resolve for example this might be a useful step What I'm going to do now is mark an in and out point because I'd like to get this out of Media Composer and do some transcoding to, for example, send it to YouTube or whatever else we're going to do with it. Unfortunately, the media on our timeline here is actually long GOP media, so we can't actually send it out as a same as source QuickTime. So what I'll have to do instead is do a mix down. So I'm going to do a video mix down and it respects the in and out points on the track. So I just give it a drive to send it to and I'm going to set it up as a DNX HD 145 because for 1080p that's that's pretty good quality. I'll get out of that. Okay, and you can see that it is DNX HD media. And next we're going to do a mix down of the audio. So we're going to actually mix it down to two separate mono tracks. So I'll create two targets, both set to mono, and then send A1 to the first track and A2 to the second. Use the marks. In this case, you have to be explicit about it. I don't want to create an extra sequence at this point. I just want the two media files. I'll create the sequence manually. So there are my two media files as well. This would be a good time to actually create a new bin, say we'll call it output, and drag this output media to that bin. And let's create a new sequence, call it multi-edit output, and we'll bring the mix downs to this new sequence. When you're dragging and positioning, if you hold the control key down, it actually snaps to the beginning of an edit point, so you can make it quite quite quickly drag it over and snap it in. So that looks pretty good. Now we will select a quick time reference for export. We have to make sure we use uh, digital mastering settings and we'll make sure we use the marked points and the selected tracks. Save that setting. We've got our target folder selected. You'll notice it's picked the name of the sequence as the name of the file name. It's very quick because it's really just creating a special uh, MOV file that's linked to the managed media that's inside Media Composer Managed Media Database. So it's a tiny little file. Let's open up Video Mastering Works. You can use whatever encoding software of your choice, but let's just show you how easy it is here. Drag it into Mastering Works. It analyzes the file. It allows you to do some trimming, although we can just, we've already pre-trimmed it, so we can just accept what we've got here. Next, you select a target format. You have a great amount of flexibility here, but since, uh, you know, we might want to send this to YouTube, so we can send set it up as a YouTube preset. We'll just accept the H.264 settings here, and they're pretty good. Switch over to the Encode tab and just make sure we're pointing at a folder for the target of the encoding. And then just click Start Encode. 
it reminds you of where it's going to put it. It actually puts it into some subfolders below whatever your target folder was. I've sped this up a little bit because my machine is actually not this powerful. Okay, once we're done, we have an option to simply open up the containing folder so we can play back the little, the little clip that we just created. Let's have a listen. Okay, not bad. Well, that's it. In this tutorial, we learned how to transcode a multicam shoot into a proxy media format suitable for real-time camera angle switching. We then saw how to link back to the original source media for finishing. Next, we flattened the multicam edit, mixed it down to a high-quality DNX HD codec, and output it as a QuickTime reference. Finally, we transcoded the QuickTime file to a YouTube-friendly format using Video Mastering Works. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you next time.